What's up guys, you're watching Blocks of Fury, and today I have a, another tutorial for you. This right here is a redstone clock. This is not your average redstone clock. Um, it's more complex than just a simple time for five minutes, but it's, uh, it's a lot less complex than, you know, like, the timers that tick the seconds by on, like, big servers and stuff. So, I think this is a really good model because it's simple enough for the average person to build. You don't have to be a redstone master. But it it's, gives a really good dynamic where you have an actual countdown from 15 minutes to 10 minutes to 5 minutes. And then after 5 minutes, when it reaches the zero, you can execute certain commands. So let's delve right into it. I have a little station up here, and you can just choose to go ahead and press the button. If you're sitting on the throne. Oh, yeah. And press the button, and it starts up the timer. And here we go. You can just see down here, the 15 has lit up. Now, as soon as this goes over and it gets to um, 10 minutes, it will switch over here. We'll check back at the end of the video and it will have switched. Now, I've taken off all of the covering, the box, and all the necessary, unnecessary rather, um, blocks, and I have made an uncovered version right here so I can walk you through the redstone. So, obviously, as soon as you press the button, there's a redstone signal that travels all the way down here, down this little redstone staircase. Pretty easy to make red sun circus, right? And then you have the actual tire mechanism. This is based off the model that uses item despawning as a method of timing. Now, an item despawns, let's say I drop this stone on the ground, that stone will be gone in five minutes. Now, this can be picked up by wooden pressure plates. So what's going to happen is as soon as I press that, it's going to trigger this dispenser. Actually, it's a dropper. Yeah, this dropper. And that dropper is going to drop one item right there. Now, what's going to happen when it drops that item is this torch is going to go off immediately. When that torch goes off, you're going to see this signal go on. Now, what the signal is doing right here is it's going to this block. And that's that block is an inverter. As soon as that redstone signal hits that block, it's going to come right here. And it's going to turn off that torch. As you see right now, it is off. Or, um, I didn't even press the button on this one. I'll just do it so I can show you. Um, it's going to turn that one on. See, because you turned that torch off when that block is there, this turns that on. Now, what's going to happen when you turn that one on, it's going to activate all these little redstone wires, which come up to various portions of this one and this five, which overall lights it up. Now, when this item despawns, I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. That dropper is going to drop the next block. However, there's a very, very good chance that, that will not land on the wooden pressure plate. To alleviate this, you need to have blocks surrounding it. I have blocks surrounding it in there, but for the purpose of clarity, I took out those blocks. So we're going to fudge it a little bit, but just remember, you need to have those blocks all along the sides like this and on top and on the other side for it to actually work. So let's take those off. And now you'll notice that will spawn another block. It actually did land on it. So then you're going to see that the next torch went off. And that would naturally happen after five minutes. I just wanted to speed up the process for the purpose of this video. So that torch went off, which turned off this thing again, which went through another inverter. Um, I think I'll just show you basically what an inverter is so you can see off to the side. So I'm not confusing all the people who don't really know redstone very well. Let's say you have one block right here, and you have this leading up to it. You put a torch right here, and this is an inverter. Now, you see right now, this is off, this is going to be your input, and this is going to be your output. This inverts the signal. So right now it's off, the output is on, put a, a torch right there, the input's on, the output's off. Basic redstone lesson. Okay. Pretty clear. So what's going to need to happen is we're going to need to invert that signal, which we've done. Uh, because, okay, well we just slipped it, and uh, whatever. But as you saw, when it was at the 5 minute mark, this torch was off. Uh, when that torch was off, it was going through this inverter. See how the torch is leading in there? And then if we come around here, we can see it's inverting that torch. Now, this is a little bit more complex. That torch, when it's on, and that torch is on when that's off, remember? So when that torch is on, it's going to light up this one because torches can travel through one block vertically. So that, block, that torch comes through and lights up this piece of redstone right here. When that's lit up, obviously, you just have the 1 and the 0 light up from these various methods of lighting up 
the 1 and the 0. So let's simulate that right now. Um, just put this, put this down right there. And fail throw. There we go. That's what would be happening. As you can see, it's all uh, lighted up. So let's take that off. Let's simulate the removal of that. And this is going to fire another one right there. And it stayed on, luckily. Oh, um, that was just because, you know, um, this doesn't have the side things on, so those had glitches. So it didn't stay. It's on the very, very edge, so it's not actually picking it up. There we go. That will simulate it. Yeah, that will simulate it being on if you do it correctly, which I just need to learn how to drop blocks. And I'm picking it up immediately. So there we go. Now it's... If this was being covered up, none of this would happen. But let's just pretend for now it would fall on, that 5 would turn on. Now, what will happen after those 15 minutes is that one will despawn at the 15 minute mark, which will make this thing turn on. That's the last one. As you can t tell, my game mode just changed. That's because after the 15 minute mark, this one's going to hit, and it's going to immediately turn off that torch. When that torch turns off, you're going to have the signal up through here, just a simple vertical redstone thing, and then come up here and trigger these command blocks. Now right now, what I need for these command blocks to do is, after the 15 minutes are up, you're going to have this command execute, which is game mode S at A, which means that all people in the entire server are going to put into game mode survival. Then I need to make sure that I stay in creative, so I'm going to put in game mode creative for me. Uh, that that's just for my game mode. If you want to see what I'm talking about with the game mode, uh, link down in the description to be below. It's a really really cool thing. You might want to sign up, see if you can get in one of the videos. But that would be pretty awesome. And you can see over here, the 10 minutes have passed. Just for the practical application, I'm going to show you a real life demonstration of what would happen if we were doing this legitimately. I have set up a little entrance point back here. That is pretty awesome. Say that you want to speed up the clock, reset it, whatever. You can come back here and you can see all this chiseled um, chiseled quartz blocks instead of the regular. So right now we're at 10 minutes. That means that this one, the second one, is going to be good. You're going to break all the ones that are the chiseled. And you're going to come in here and you're going to pick up the block, right? Pick it up and then the next one's going to execute. And now that's picked up. The um, That simulates the despawning. And then it should be at 5, which it is. And then we will pick up the 5 one, which simulates that despawning after 15 minutes. And that should be pretty easy. Right here, pick it up. And you'll notice it just set my uh, game mode to survival and then creative really, really quickly because of the command blocks. And lastly, if we want to just put a final reset, just pick up this block. It's not going to do anything, but just, my gosh. Come on, let's get it. There we go. Um, it's not going to do anything, but I'll just make it so we can restart the clock. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, as you can see, everything has reset. I will include two things in the description below besides what I've already mentioned. I will include a link to this world so you can check out the timers for yourself. And then I will include a dot schematic file for use in World Edit, or not World Edit, for MC Edit. If you don't know how to use MC Edit, there are tons of tutorials out there to show you how to do it. You can just press input, um, or rather import, and then you can import the dot schematic file into your world anywhere you want. So that will make it really easy for you to put this wherever you want, either when, whether it's in a map or whether it's in your own survival world for whatever reason. I'm sure that you can find some uses for this. I know I certainly have. And let's just go ahead and check it out on my multiplayer server so you can see how cool it looks. Here we go. And yeah, it's pretty awesome. The server is for the um, Stronghold Challenge. And there's the timer. And it works absolutely fantastically. And please, once again, check out the video down in the description below. And then leave your IGN uh, down in that comment section so you can become a challenger in my stronghold challenge. Thanks a ton for watching. Please leave a like. It helps out a ton. Favorite if you really liked it. And subscribe to become a blockhead today. I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.